Well, hello everybody, and welcome to the Footsteps of the Past channel. Today we got something very exciting going on. As you can see, some floor! Finally, after weeks of work, we finally get to have some good results. No more jumping up and down from the crawl space up to the joists and wearing out my knees and coming home very tired. So I was so excited. I came out here yesterday, forgot my camera, but I went ahead and got started. But I promise I'll show you how to start subfloors. It's one of the more difficult things to start. You want to make sure you take your two measurements from the same place every time. So this is going to be my reference because I want it to be tight to my existing subfloors factory edge and then the tongue over here. I want it to be tight to this. So I'm going to reference off the top of the tongue here and then off of this here. Never reference off a wall, off the chimney. That's just going to mess your piece up. Alright, we're all laid out on the board. Get your circular saw, jigsaw, saw saw, however you like to cut your plywood. Circular saw is probably the best. This here is what they call a tongue, hence a groove, tongue and groove. The, the tongue slides into the groove like this to make one section and then they won't flip flop around like this as you walk on. If you opt to not get tongue and groove, make sure you at least use clips. There are metal clips that go in around this and they interlock the two pieces or you can simply just put a 2x4 in between the joists is blocking to lay them on but the tongue of groove is much easier so let's go that route now this is a step that many people overlook and don't do make sure you glue down your subflooring otherwise you're prone to squeaks it doesn't have to be done it's not to code you don't have to do it at least where I'm at um, I, any construction adhesive. I have a big tube of panel adhesive left over from another job. I'm going to finish it up, then I'm going to switch to a subfloor adhesive. It doesn't have to be subfloor adhesive again. Any construction adhesive will do. It's better than nothing. guys so this is an open seam we need to close that up so it looks closer to this what you're going to need is a sledgehammer a heavy hammer or in this case my wrecking bar because i don't have my sledgehammer here today i don't normally use it for sub flooring and a sacrificial bar or a sacrificial board you're going to put it against your tongue stand over here and we're going to smack this really hard until this closes up behind me. There it is, all joined up here. Remember, we glued it. It's time to nail it. I put factory edge to factory edge. Always factory edge to factory edge. Make sure these seams this tongue and this tongue line up because we're going to stagger our plywood. So the next piece is going to go over like this and cover that joint so all the weight from the subfloor doesn't fall on this one joist. Otherwise, your floors will bounce again and be create a weak spot in your floor. You can see here I staggered the seam. Now, you don't want to stagger a seam one joist apart, you want to stagger at least two joists apart. So I go a full sheet of plywood, so we go a full sheet of plywood to here, and then you're going to start with a half sheet of plywood. Then you're going to start with a full sheet of plywood over there, and then the next one again will be half. That way we see and we're sh at least two. That way we're at least two joists apart, and it creates a nice strong floor. Okay, now let's talk about the nails or the screws or the fasteners that we're going to be using. First, you know we're using construction adhesive. We always, always, always glue our subfloor down. It's going to limit the squeaks in your floor. If you have a squeaky floor, 
you can thank your installer for not using glue. I today am going to use a two and a half inch or two and three eighths, somewhere around there, ring shank nail. So the ring shank down here are little barbs on your nails that nail down and it holds almost like a screw. A screw will hold a little bit better, but to put a thousand screws in the floor takes all day long. To put a thousand nails in a screw in the floor is a lot faster, even if you're driving them by hand. You could also use spiral nails. They don't hold quite as well as a ring shank nail, but they're better than a smooth shank nail. You could use smooth shank nails, but they're prone to riding back up and popping out when the floor vibrates. So a ring shank nail is your best bet. So all my 1980 and my 1990 friends out there, it's hammer time. Shows you what kind of professional I am. I just made you think I nailed this whole thing in by hand. I'm not crazy. I'm using a nail gun. It's very important that when you're shooting a nail gun in for subfloor, especially into oak joists, that you don't use the bump setting. This will allow you to shoot nails in really fast. And by doing that, you won't be sure that your nail is sinking and holding strongly to the joist. Make sure you're taking the nail gun and you're pushing it down so the subfloor is sinking and it's tight to the joist. Otherwise, again, squeaky floors. I'd like to point out that a sheet of three quarter inch OSB weighs about 70 pounds. And it's a scientific proven fact that every time you pick up a piece of three quarter inch OSB during your job, the next piece is going to weigh one pound more. I've laid about 20 pieces so far, so right now this weighs about 90 pounds to me. So let's get going. 91! Don't worry, about a week after your plywood job, it resets back to its natural rate, which is about 70 pounds. So start your subfloor in an old house. Uh, don't expect things to be straight. Things are going to be crooked. So you need to set a reference point so that we can to verify if this wall is straight and then square with the floor joists. Uh, this could possibly be the floor joists are crooked. I redid these floor joists. I know they're not crooked, but uh, if you don't redo the floor joists, you don't know. So uh, what we'll do is we'll use a string line. Uh, there's a mason line. These are like $2. Super cheap, but very, very good at making sure things are straight and level. So we'll make a reference mark off of the wall on the far end of the room. And we'll put a, a nail or a screw in there to hold the, uh, the string. I just put my screw in at 16 inches over here. I'll bring it over there we'll put it in at 16 inches. And then we'll measure off of this line when it's tight to the wall to see if the wall is going on one of these numbers because we want it to be tight to the wall or um, see if it's straight. If you're in a new house, you're probably lucky. You could just take this plywood, shove it up against the wall, nail it down perpendicular to the joist, and you're good to go. But this house is 170 years old or something like that. So um, it's probably not going to be straight. Okay, got my string here. Now we gotta make it tight. We'll put in a mason's knot. So we'll go we'll take this rope, we'll go around this rope one, two, three, four times. And then you'll take the end of the rope and this rope, pull this one towards you and this one away from you. And that makes your string tight. Then we'll take this string, pull it this way. And I like to wrap around two or three times from the screw. Hook this dude in. Now, tight string, if it loosens up, all you do is unwrap it from the screw and tighten it. The only way it's going to loosen up is if somebody accidentally kicks it. So, I set my, my uh, not my chalk line, but my mason line here. And uh, we're 16 inches from this point, then all the way over in that side of the room, which is, it's only 9 feet. Uh, it's 16. Then I come to the center and we're half, uh, 16 and a half. 
So this piece of plywood needs to be cut, be cut a half inch longer in the center where it's going to butt up against the wall. That way our piece of plywood is tight to the wall. Otherwise we'll have a half inch gap here on our subfloor. We want to keep the subfloor as tight as possible to the wall. Uh, 95. Alright, when you're laying plywood, make sure the factory seam falls halfway along the joist. When nailing your floor joists, make sure you use one nail every six inches along the outside seams. But on the inside seams, you only need to put a nail about every 12 inches. Next week I'm going to show you how to level this floor. This floor is about 11 to 12 feet and we're off three and a quarter of an inch. So uh, a lot of times in old houses they'll turn porches which are supposed to have a negative grade like that flowing rain fall off and they'll enclose them and turn them into, well in this case a kitchen. So we don't want our kitchen to have that much of a crooked floor. Um, so I'm going to show you with the use of a string line, lag bolts, the impact gun, how fast we can level this. So tune in next week. Again, I'm Jay with Footsteps in the Past channel, and this is my old farmhouse. Thanks for stopping.